Hi everyone, my name is Daryl. Today I'm going to talk to you about purchasing a used A-liner. I'm not a current A-liner owner. In fact, I have never owned any sort of camper before. I am, however, in the middle of trying to find a used A-liner and I've started compiling some resources to help me with the search for finding the perfect A-liner vacation home. I believe that a lot of A-liner future owners are similar to myself in that they used to be 10 campers and an A-liner camper will be their first camper experience. In fact, I've never even towed anything before, so purchasing a used A-liner camper is a pretty daunting experience for me. So as I'm going through this process, my intention is to share what I've learned, or what I think I've learned, in an effort to help others that are in a similar situation such as myself. I'm considering this video really more of a draft, because there are a lot of RV owners or veteran A-liner owners that are much more knowledgeable than myself. So I hope that they see this video and feel compelled to educate me on a particular topic or make suggestions for additional items to include. If this is the case, I will update the video appropriately. Okay, so now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's get started. I think the first thing you should do in your search, if you haven't done it already, is become knowledgeable about the A-liner. There are a number of resources to help you with this. Probably the first is the A-liner website. Here you can look at the different models of A-liner campers and determine which one would be best for you. You can see the features of the different models and their weights. If you happen to live close to an A-liner dealer, I don't. Then you might also want to spend a few hours looking at what they have in stock. Spend a good couple of hours checking out all the features, having the salesman lower and raise the roof and walls, check out the beds, make sure to get really familiar with all the features of the A-liner. Another good resource is the internet. There are a number of Facebook groups dedicated to A-liners. There are three groups that I'm aware of, including the Camping with A-liners group, probably the oldest, biggest, and most active group, the A-Frame Technical Resource Center, which is about A-frames in general, but they tend to focus on A-liners. There is lots of very good technical discussion and they have owner's manuals and technical documentation available for the A-liners. There is also a Facebook group called A-Liner Life. There is an A-Liners Owners Club website that also provides helpful information. To get full access to that site, you actually need to own an A-Frame camper, but there are a number of helpful articles with technical discussions of the A-Liner that is available on this site. Lastly, there are tons of videos about the A-Liners on YouTube. Some of the most popular channels are Slim Potato Head's content, he used to own an A-liner and has tons of videos on maintenance and making changes to his A-liner. There is also the channel called Going Nowhere Fast that also has tons of maintenance videos on his A-liner. Watching some of these videos can be really helpful in understanding more about the A-liner and some of the maintenance and problems that can pop up with the A-liner camper, which would help you when you're going out and doing an inspection. I would also recommend some of the walkthrough RV tech tour videos from Princess Craft RV especially if you're not close to an A-liner dealer and can't visit an A-liner in person. These videos will walk you through the various A-liner models and the features of each one. The videos are pretty comprehensive, lasting 30 minutes or more in length. Okay, so now you're knowledgeable. What's next? Well, let's try to get up to speed on your tow vehicle and ensure it's ready and can handle the weight of the A-liner. I have a RAV4 Prime which is really not the ideal tow vehicle for any camper. It only has a tow rating of 2,500 pounds, so I've got to be very careful about which A-liner model I choose and how much stuff I put in the A-liner. I'm assuming you know your vehicle's tow rating, but the rule of thumb is whatever your tow rating is, you probably only want to tow about 75% of that rating. So in my case, my Prime can handle 2,500 pounds, and 75% of that is 1,875 pounds. You also need to be aware of your tongue weight capacity, which is typically 10% of the tow rating, as well as your cargo capacity. Finally, there's the dry weight of the A-liner, which is the A-liner's weight from the factory before the battery is installed and before propane is added to the tanks. What's really awesome about A-liner is they typically have a true weight sticker on the wall panel hinge, so you can be assured of the weight of the particular trailer as it left the factory. There really is a lot to learn, and there are always lots of arguments in the various Facebook groups about this topic, so be careful. So that's enough on tow ratings before I get in trouble. You also need to ensure your vehicle has a hitch, and I'm assuming you've taken care of that. You also need a 7-pin wire and harness to connect to the A-liner. 
you also need to have either a wired or wireless brake controller. Another item you will need is the ball hitch. Depending on which A-liner you get, standard or off-road model, the distance the hitch ball is from the ground varies. You will want to go to U-Haul or some other store to get a 2-inch hitch ball if you want to be able to take the trailer home. As I understand it, for the standard non-off-road A-liner, the bottom of the ball should be 14 inches from the ground. For the off-road version, the bottom of the ball should be 18 inches from the ground. So now your tow vehicle is ready. I'm just wondering if you have towed anything before. If you have, you can probably just fast forward. But if you haven't, you should probably take a little time to become more knowledgeable about towing. You need to drive slower. You need to be much more aware of what's around you. You don't want to brake too hard. And what happens if your trailer starts swaying? As I've mentioned before, I've never towed anything before. So I've spent a little time trying to educate myself, but nothing can beat experience. Me and my wife plan on renting a U-Haul just to get a little experience under our belt. If for nothing else, just to practice backing up. There are a number of websites allowing you to search for used A-liners. Probably the best one is Craigslist. Facebook has a marketplace where A-liners can be found, and it's pretty easy to search. There is also an A-liner marketplace group on Facebook that is a good place to find one. There are RV websites such as RV Trader, which lists new A-liners, but also lists used ones as well, as well as for sale by owner listings. Lastly, there is a page on the A-Liners Owners Club that also lists A-Liners for sale. Okay, now it's time to search for our A-Liner, right? Well, if you happen to find an A-Liner, what do you do next? When you call the owner, do you have questions ready, or are you just going to drive down and ask the questions then? What if the A-Liner is in the next state? I'd recommend you have a list of questions ready before you decide to make a trip to inspect it. Luckily, I've already got a list of questions ready for you. One question might be, have you had any issues with the door, i.e., does the door open and shut and lock easily? If you don't know, that's a common problem with A-liners that can be caused by A-liners that are exposed to extreme temperatures, causing the panels to expand and contract a little. It's something that might be important to you. You'll find these potential questions on a Google Sheet listed in the description of this video. So what's next? Well, how much are you willing to pay for the A-liner you want? Do you know what the MSRP is of the current A-liners for that model that you want? What about dormers? What is the list price to add those? I'd recommend you look at the MSRPs of the A-liner model that you want, as well as the accessories. Included in the video description is a link to the Google Doc with the MSRP price sheets of the 2021 and 2022 A-liners. You will also want to look at the Nata Guides website. This website will let you know for used RVs what the average price is that they're selling for. There are probably a number of these sites available, but I believe this is the most well-known. Simply go to the nataguides.com website and select the A-liner model and the year that you're interested in, as well as the location you're purchasing from, and it will provide you a listing of the average price, high and low prices for that model. I'd also recommend that you research the buyer a little bit. Google them and see what comes up. Ask them if they are active in the A-liner user community. Ask them if they participate in the Facebook groups. See what kind of posts they have created or responded to. Ask for the VIN number of the A-liner and the dealer they purchased from. Does everything check out and there are no red flags? So now it's time to take a trip and inspect the trailer. I'd give yourself at least four hours to do the inspection. Do you have a list of items that you want to check? Well, lucky for you, I have started that already. I have compiled a checklist from multiple sources that I will be using when I do my inspections. I have a good friend on Instagram, Pete, who started the list for me. I also found a great video from Going Nowhere Fast, where he recommends specific things to check for. I'd recommend watching that video. The A-Frame Technical Resource Center Facebook group also has a really comprehensive document with specific items to look for, as well as other suggestions, such as which modifications to an A-liner adds value. My checklist doesn't show how to do the inspection, however. I will be doing an upcoming video where I do an actual inspection, and that will cover how to do it. I've already covered a lot in this video, and there's really so much more to cover. You need to think about insurance, your local DMV requirements, title, notary, how to pay, and many other items that I won't cover in this video. I do, however, think it's important to bring some tools with you to assist with the inspection, and these tools are included in the inspection checklist. If you are not comfortable inspecting the trailer by yourself, 
there are RV inspectors that you can contact to do it for you. My next video in this series will be my wife and I renting a U-Haul trailer and practicing backing up. That should be a really fun video. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I will be documenting my entire process for searching for an A-liner. I'm hoping these videos will be both educational and, if nothing else, entertaining. Below is a video that you might like. I'll see y'all soon.